very warm welcome to all of you to this very first panel debate this very afternoon revolving around Russia's annexation of Crimea and its repercussions for Ukraine and Europe. I think I can speak on behalf of all of us, or probably most of us, that this is A, a timely topic, and B, an extremely pertinent topic. It is timely, as it is exactly today, that we mark, in fact, the fourth anniversary of this unlawful, in fact, unconstitutional referendum that took place on the 16th of March 2014, and that, in fact, preceded Crimea's incorporation into the Russian Federation. So it is very timely, and it is, of course, also extremely pertinent, and it is not just pertinent for Ukraine as such, but it has a very strong international dimension, repercussion, so to speak, and in that sense, I disagree with one of the previous panelists. This is not an abstract debate. This has very concrete fallouts as we need to learn lessons so that what happens in Ukraine, what has been happening in Crimea up until now, does not repeat itself elsewhere or at least can be contained. My name is Tobias Schumacher. I am a permanent professor here at Natalin. I'm also the chairholder of the European Neighborhood Policy Chair, which is also located here at Natalin. And I'm joined this afternoon by Katarina Pryszczepa, who is a project officer in the 3R project, which is based here at Natolin, as well as by Adam Reichert, who is the editor-in-chief of New Eastern Europe, a journal that most of you, I guess, I hope, know already very well. Now, we are also joined by, in fact, seven panelists this afternoon, but before we bring in the other five panelists, let me first of all <coughs> sorry, introduce our two speakers for now, who will kick off this panel debate by giving two kickoff presentations, so to speak, one that focuses a little bit more on the international consequences of the annexation of Crimea, as opposed to the second one that has a I guess, stronger focus on the situation of the Crimean Tatar people. So to my left, it is our honor and privilege to introduce to you and welcome very warmly Dr. Slavomir Debski, who is the director of the Polish Institute for International Affairs, a position that he has already held from 2007 to 2010. Opposite me, we have uh, Mr. Refa Chubarov. A very warm welcome to you as well. As most of you know, I guess, he is the chairman of the Majlis of Crimean Tatar people, which, as most of you know, was banned and outlawed by the Russian appointed Supreme Court of Crimea in April 2016. And since May 2015, he is also a member of the Verhofna Rada. That should be it for now. We would like to start by showing you a very brief documentary, just to recapitulate very briefly the events of February and March 2014. Then we will hand over to our two speakers to be followed by a second video screening, and then we bring in the other speakers. 26 лютого біля Верховної Ради Криму збираються кримчани, які за Україну і ті, що за Росію. Тиснява сутички і різні прапори. До чого збройні люди захоплюють владні приміщення. Наступного дня зранку над Верховною Радою АРК вже майорить триколор. Вулицями пересувається військова техніка. У Москві мовчанка не підтверджують і не спростовують, що це російські БТРи. На ранок біля аеродрому Бельбек з'являються і зелені чоловічки. За кілька днів українських військових витискають. Прибувають 11 військових гелікоптерів Росії. Тисячі озброєних людей без шевронів чи будь-яких розпізнавальних знаків блокують українських військових. Та форма така. Або українські або російські? Російські, він слушає. 
Манчур і військові з Бельбека йдуть до заблокованої частини без зброї, лише з прапором, співаючи гімн. Зелені чоловічки відкривають вогонь. В Керчі морські піхотинці влаштовують концерт біля КПП. Психологическое было давление, все в этом. То есть, поэтому, чтобы взбодрить народ, и придум, пришла такая идея организовать сегодня вот такой небольшой импровизированный концерт. Женки за Украину. С 3 березня и впродовж тижня в Крыму проходят мирные женские протесты. Тысячи людей стали на узбичи дорог и с плакатами «Крым – это Украина». Мы с Украиной. Березня мітинг на честь дня народження Тараса Шевченка перетворюється на акцію проти військової агресії в Криму. Люди співають народні пісні і кажуть, що вони за український Крим. Слава Україні! Держава, це, це наша ненька, ми, ми її дуже любимо. Захистіть нас! Не покидайте нас! Чи ви хочете другого Гітлера в Європі? Вже за тиждень, 16 березня, кульмінація подій на півострові – референдум. У бюлетенях два варіанти – визову з'єднання Криму з Росією на правах суб'єкта РФ чи за статус Криму як частини України. Так звана самооборона і кримське казачество охороняють дільниці. Незалежних спостерігачів немає. За Росію. За стабільність. Сердце радується, наконець-таки всю... Прошло. Я родилась и живу в Симферополе. Я учусь. Вот тебе мнение, иди, пожалуйста. Уже за два дня Володимир Путин урочисто дает распоряжение принять Крым и Севастополь до складу России. Вношу в Федеральное собрание и прошу рассмотреть конституционный закон о принятии в состав России двух новых субъектов Федерации – Республики Крым и города Севастополь. I'm, uh, I'm thinking when, where I should start now, um, uh, but uh, maybe I um, try to uh, introduce um, just a few data which uh, um, didn't appear in this uh, movie, uh, because the, the story starts 26th of February um, in Crimea, but actually uh, we have to go back a few days earlier um, uh, to the meeting which uh, occurred in, in the Kremlin 20th of February um, uh, 2014. That was a, a gathering of very few people, uh, including President of Russian Federation, uh, Vladimir Putin. Um, uh, very few um, deci Russian decision makers, most of them um, a former KGB, all sec Russian security services uh, officers. And in this small group of people, no more than 10, um, probably six to seven, um, uh, they jointly uh, made the decision about, you said, you used the word incorporation of uh, Crimea into Russian Federation. Um, um, Uh, so when you use this word, uh, I immediately realize that uh, um, um, that's uh, the kind of the wording, wording that uh, um, um, is plausible uh, for, for the Russian side. We are talking here about the annexation. Some people um, uh, add to this um, uh, uh, word adjective illegal. But uh, actually, we do it for political reasons, uh, as you know, from the point of view of international law, any annexation is illegal. So to clarify that, uh, politicians and um, you know, 
to emphasize that we are dealing here with the blunt violation of international law, uh, adjective illegal. Um, what were consequences? I think uh, that's also very important uh, to mention. 27th of March uh, to, uh, 2014, uh, we had um, United Nations General Assembly resolution adopted. Uh, 100 countries of the world uh, voted against the opinion that Crimea is Russian. Uh, 58 countries uh, abstained, and only 11 countries supported uh, the opinion that uh, Russia effectively incorporated uh, Crimea into, uh, um, into Russian Federation. Um, it should be noted here that the voting in uh, United Nations General Assembly didn't represent uh, neither Russophobia nor anti-Russian prejudice, but it was reflection of very practical and pragmatic approach that um, we would be regressing uh, in the world and even less safe than it is today were annexation to be condoned as a legitimate instrument of international politics. Uh, we have to em emphasize here that uh, most countries of the world regarded Russian policy towards uh, Ukraine in respect of, of Crimea as a military aggression. Uh, based on this resolution of United Nations General Assembly, um, the, the, the most developed countries of the world decided to introduce um, non-recognition policy, and as a consequence of this non-recognition policy, uh, a sanctions uh, regime was, was established. Um, and in response of that, of course, we heard on the Russian side that actually the case is over, <coughs> that um, um, it is illegal uh, on the ground of Russian uh, domestic law to question uh, incorporation of, of uh, Crimea in, into the Federation. Um, um, and uh, 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 President Vladimir Putin um, regularly um, um, issues statements that uh, uh, there is no room for the change of uh, the situation. There is no room for reincorporation of Crimea into Russian into Ukraine. Uh, and here, an in important, interesting question. Uh, uh, stars for anyone who deals with the political um, issues. When you have to uh, reconfirm and reconfirm uh, day by day and uh, year by year that something, uh, there is no room for change, it means that actually uh, uh, the issue, the problem is under question because otherwise there was no need to reconfirm it. Um, uh, I believe, and I wrote uh, uh, um, about it in an article published a year after annexation in Crimea in Russian newspaper Vedomosti, that actually the annexation of Crimea and the Russian aggression on Ukraine um, uh, is a turning, it was a turning point in Russian EU, Russian West relations, that sooner or later Russia uh, would uh, be. Um, I don't want to use the, the, the word force, but uh, uh, would find itself in the position that there would be no other option uh, but reconsider uh, in the case of, uh, of Crimea. Um, because uh, the West, Europe, Ukraine cannot and would not be able to recognize uh, um, annexation of Crimea as a legitimate uh, instrument of pursuing policy. 
um, we would uh, 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 then uh, have to think about the possible solutions, and there are three possible scenarios. Uh, we can think about um, legitimate uh, secession of uh, Crimea to Russia, you know, with consent of, of uh, Ukrainian people, with consent of, of Ukrainians. We can think about, uh, um, you know, uh, withdrawing uh, um, Russian uh, uh, forces from uh, um, um, occupied territories of Crimea and. Uh, regaining the, the full control over the territory by the Ukrainian um, uh, state. And the last option, a kind of the, um, um, for, for some period of time, a kind of the transition period, we could think about international trust established um, in this uh, uh, area for, well, we can, we can think about 30, 50 years, after which after which, um, um, you know, general uh, um, uh, um, elections or plebiscite of voting could occur, which would uh, ultimately de decide um, about the future of, of the peninsula. However, we have to also recognize the fact that the Russian side um, is doing <coughs> a lot to prevent such scenario. Um, by the way, they are, they are following, the, you know, uh, um, the policies uh, towards Crimea is following uh, actually the examples of, uh, of annexation of um, uh, Poland's territories after 1939 by the book. Um, the same is happening. Um, there, was a, there was a plebiscite in 1939 uh, after uh, Soviet aggression uh, on Poland. There were uh, people was, were expulsed from uh, from this uh, territory, or you know, uh, were taken to the Siberia, and new colonization started. All of these uh, are instruments now are in force uh, in Crimea, and of course, uh, um, um, as uh, long as Russia um, would not be put in the position um, that uh, um, Russian elite would see reconsider reconsideration of, of the Crimea policy as a good for themselves, um, this policy would continue. Thank you very much, uh, Slavomir. And thank you very much also for engaging um, in distinguishing between the, the, the use of different wordings, incorporation versus annexation, I did not, of course, mean to subscribe to um, the, the sort of more positive um, um, narrative revolving around the incorporation kind of um, use. But I think that is a very important distinction that you made, as, as it is not just a semantic distinction that has, of course, repercussions from an international law perspective. Secondly, I, I would also like to thank you very much for referring to um, the uh, General Assembly resolution of the 27th of March um, 2014 and pointing out the fact that in fact you did have 93 countries back then that either abstained, did not participate or voted against that very resolution. Um, I think that is an extremely important reminder. Katarina, you wanted to add a word or two on the video. Yes, uh, as we, um, we, first we have to thank the uh, Radio Free Europe Crimea Realities Program for this first video in this panel. And also uh, the point of this video was to demonstrate because the annexation of Crimea is presented in international media especially as something which was unilaterally supported and wished by the Crimean people. And it was very important to remind that there was a silent and peaceful protest against this annexation and it was overtaken by, by brutal force. So we have to bear that in mind. And uh, as now we will move to the presentation of the situation for the people who live in annex Crimea now from the point of view of people who know what the situation on the ground is. Uh, so it was very important to remind the, how it started. Yeah. And the floor is yours, Mr. Jumarov. Як і пан Славомир, я теж думаю, з чого розпочати. 
Wydobyli się film. Dziękuję bardzo. Thank you very much. Uh, over 15,000 people following uh, the um, appeal by uh, the Majelis of the Tatar people of the Crimea did not uh, allow uh, its members uh, to vote on a supposedly illegal act. Uh, by the end of, uh, by the 26th of February, on the Crimea, there were plenty of uh, Russian uh, agents uh, who forced deputies of the Crimean uh, Parliament to uh, provide a, a televised show uh, for the international community. But uh, facing a resistance uh, on 27th uh, February, the so-called uh, green men uh, under arms uh, took over the government buildings and in this way the phase of open military interference mm, on uh, the Crimean uh, territory in Ukraine began. On the 6th of March, all strategic points on the Crimea were set, uh, occupied by uh, Russian military and on 26th of March all the deputies were crowded into the parliament building and uh, they, uh, on the 6th, they adopted uh, the decision on the referendum to be held a week later, which is easy when you have uh, everything under control with the use of the military and tanks. So, uh, three weeks later, in the face uh, of the whole uh, world, the international community, uh, Russia took over the Crimea, annexing it, and on 18th March, Putin signed the decrees on the incorporation of the Crimea into the Russian Federation. So, overnight, uh, international law, which had been built up uh, with uh, great effort and pain over the years, <coughs> was uh, violated and in this way destroyed. It took four years until now uh, to m change the situation with uh, no result. And I would like uh, now to... Uh, I'd like uh, to say that it's a pity that uh, the uh, participants of the previous panels are not present uh, now, because it would be uh, worthwhile for them uh, to be here so that we could understand the motivation of those uh, who uh, prepared <coughs> the, mon, uh, the Norman uh, format and the Minsk agreements, because uh, Mr. Hollande and Madame Merkel must have been also mentioning uh, the Crimea, yet in the Minsk uh, agreements there is no mention of the Crimea. So, uh, this initiative was positive in that it stopped uh, the uh, hot, the bloody war uh, 
or at least interrupted the bloody war in the east of Ukraine, but I wonder what was uh, the perception and the uh, prognosis for the east of uh, Ukraine, uh, without mentioning the Crimea, uh, on the basis of dialogue with the Russian Federation under Putin. So I'd like uh, to talk here about uh, consequences for the Crimea as part of the Ukrainian state. I myself represent the Crimean Tatars. 230 years in history is not that long, after all, uh, for a nation. So, such a long period mm, of suppression of uh, liberties uh, and uh, the Crimea had been uh, already annexed uh, or incorporated into the Russian state already for the first time in 1773 and then we had the Crimean War in 1853. And then there was uh, the Osman Empire, the French, uh, the Saudis against uh, Russia, the Crimean War, uh, following which uh, Russia held on to Crimea and uh, expelled from there at the time 170,000 Crimean Tatars, according to official records. And Stalin uh, uh, what the Tsarist uh, Empire failed um, uh, to um, implement, uh, Stalin uh, deported uh, Crimean Tatars fully from the Crimea and uh, they could return only in the 80s uh, with the fall of the Soviet Empire. The uh, Crimean Tatars didn't wait uh, for um, a um, favorable turn of fate, but were active in uh, striving to return to the Crimea. And when they started building their lives um, in uh, under um, the Ukrainian, in the U as part of the Ukrainian state, they are again um, removed from the Crimea by Russia. Uh, so what's the significance of this uh, for the Tatar nation? So the question for us is how long will this occupation take? Uh, and uh, the consequences for the people living there and for the Crimean Tatars uh, people who uh, just before that had managed to return to its homeland after a tragic uh, history. I'd like also to note uh, some consequences. For Russia, the Crimea is a military base uh, on the southern flank of NATO. If you build up a stronghold somewhere, we don't want to have ill-loyal people there. And that's what Russia is doing. It is openly and brutally uh, taking steps, decisions, declarations, statements, uh, starting with the UN resolution of uh, December uh, 2017, there are uh, resolutions of the European Parliament, of the Council, but Russia today is able not to react to international uh, decisions, uh, to decisions by international bodies, because it is strong enough uh, to um, challenge them. So Russia is removing uh, Crimean uh, Tatars and ethnic Ukrainians from the Crimea. It is uh, replacing uh, 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 them by um, Russians and they are uh, conducting a kind of ethnic cleansing and uh, 
replacement of the population there. Uh, for Russia, the Crimea is not uh, necessary as an economic area, but as a military base for airports, uh, for uh, rocket launchers, uh, and so on. Uh, I would like to conclude Uh, quoting uh, the ambassador who said that uh, we have overcome uh, the Soviet Union, and it's true. Uh, we are often told that the Baltic states had to wait for 50 years, so we should also be patient. Well, as for Crimean Tatars and ethnic uh, inhabitants of the Crimea, we don't even have 10 years um, time uh, to be patient because uh, Russians are applying repression uh, despite people's resistance are forcing people out and uh, to uh, and to uh, let themselves be displaced. Mr. Uh, President Hollande uh, said uh, an important thing we've been quoting in Ukraine uh, for the past four years. Pressure needs to be exerted on Russia not only to stop aggression, but to force it back into the framework of uh, international law. And this requires uh, painful enough sanctions so as uh, to make Russia uh, accept the demands of the international community and to act, and to act uh, in line with international law. Uh, one of uh, such measures could consist of an embargo on um, Russian um, energy sources. Uh, over history, nations which were mm, suppressed have always uh, reacted with opposition. So the world shouldn't seek in dialogue with Putin to seek such forms uh, which uh, could be degrading uh, for the Ukrainian nation. So uh, you need to remember also about that. Thank you for your attention. Uh, thank you very much. Before we uh, move on to discussion, we'd like to show uh, one more uh, video material, one more movie uh, showing the situation of uh, Crimean Tatars after the occupation and annexation of the Crimea.
would now like to invite the other panelists to the table. In the order of their appearance, let me, in the program of course, let me introduce them to all of you and again welcome them also very warmly. I would like to bring in Dr. Piotr Bayor, who joins us this afternoon from Jagiellonian University in Krakow, where he works in the Institute of Political Science and International Relations. Dr. Gulnara Bekirova, who is a very well-known historian and journalist working for the Crimean Tata TV channel ATR, which is operating, as most of you know, I guess, since, if I'm not mistaken, the summer of 2015 from Kiev. In fact, uh, Dr. Bekirova, and I would like to point this out, has just recently published an extremely relevant book entitled Half a Century of Resistance, the Crimean Tatars from Expulsion to Return. A very warm welcome to you as well. Then I would like to invite to the table Miss Lily Haidt, joining us, if I'm not mistaken, from Prague, um, from Kiev, in fact, even. Um, she is a British writer and journalist writing on Ukraine affairs for a number of international media outlets such as The Guardian, The Times, Newsweek, Foreign Policy, um, and New Internationalist. She has, in fact, written six books, mainly fiction and, and fairy tales, four of which, if I'm not mistaken, revolve around Ukraine. Then I would like to invite to the table Mr. Alexander Yankovsky, a Ukrainian journalist who works for Chernomorskaya TV, which since 2014 operates from Kiev as well, or is forced to operate from Kiev as well, where in fact he produces on a weekly basis reports and documentaries about daily life in Crimea. And he also works for Krim.Reali, a service of Radio Liberty, Radio Free Europe. And last but not least, I would also like to bring into this discussion Mr. Ilmi Umarov, who is the deputy chairman of Mejlis of the Crimean Tatar people, former minister in the government of the Autonomous Republic of Crimea. And I guess, as most of you know, he was convicted by a so-called court in Crimea, Russian appointed, of course, um, for his opposition to Russia's annexation of Crimea. He was sentenced um, to two years in prison. That was a sentence that was even harsher than what was requested back then by the occupation prosecutor. But fortunately, owing to the intervention of the Turkish president, he was released in October last year and is now in exile in Ankara. It's a pleasure to have all of you around this table. And maybe I can pose the very first question to Mr. Jankowski, Ms. Hyde, and Dr. Bayor picking up on what has been said by Mr. Chubarov. If I recall correctly, you said four years have passed, no results, no, 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 no progress has been achieved. And it also reminds me of what the clergyman in, in the first video said, save us, don't leave us alone. Does the issue of Crimea receive sufficient attention? Or is it actually a fact do we have to acknowledge that apart from some occasional reports, I'm thinking of the ICC report of December last year, um, the UN report of, of September last year, the ICG report of April, and so on and so forth, last night's session of the United Nations Security Council, apart from some occasional meetings, apart from some occasional reports, very little has been done. In fact, the issue has been, I wouldn't want to say forgotten, but is widely ignored. Maybe Mr. Jankowski. I think uh, that certainly we are talking about the inhabitants of Crimea uh, that uh, are over two million uh, of the remaining Crimea inhabitants. Why do you think that it's Ukraine? If I were asked that, I would uh, answer very directly because among those two million inhabitants, each of those inhabitants has the Ukrainian flag. 
it is on the Ukrainian passport. Those citizens have those Ukrainian passports. In reality, what's, what happened at the time in 2014 has some strategic ramifications for the Crimean Tatars and for the U Ukrainians in Crimea and for the Russians who remain in the peninsula because immediately after the repression machinery of the Russian Federation banned the mm, majlis of the Crimean Tatars, did away with Ukrainian activists. F just this week, for example, there was a court hearing on the uh, in the case of Vladimir Baloch, uh, an activist who was in prison for four years only for hanging out the Ukrainian flag in his flat over his building and uh, for publishing in social media uh, that photo. So there are some people who are not afraid to speak that about the Ukrainian identity, that there are political Ukrainians and that there are Ukrainian citizens. But the Russian uh, machinery is n unstoppable. It's not Im enough for them to just be repressive towards the Crimean Tatars and the Ukrainians. The machinery is now focusing on uh, trying to uh, achieve it on the 16th of March 2018 uh, achieve the elections of the president of the <coughs> Russian Federation. The world is protesting. The world is not acknowledging that there are several um, explicit declarations uh, that have been heard that the world is not going to uh, acknowledge these. But Putin is coming to Crimea on, and he came on the 14th of March to demonstrate that uh, he owns the territory. And what's very important is that for Russian officials is that they are trying to demonstrate that they enjoy the support that they spoke about in 2014, that uh, allegedly this was the support of the entire population. But let me recall that in March 2014, they said that 83% of Crimean citizens came to the elections and cast a ballot in favor of um, incorporating Crimea. But in 2016, there were elections held in uh, the Crimean Peninsula to the National Duma, to the National Parliament in Russia. And uh, only 40% of inhabitants uh, turned, out, turned up for these elections. Uh, because as soon as the Russian principles uh, were in, uh, reinstated, the, the turnout fell from 83 to 40%. They were no longer there in uh, uh, they just wrote that they were 83% of people and the Russian officials who are in charge of the situation in Crimea, they want to uh, demonstrate that on the 18th of March 2018, a lot of people will cast their ballots in the, in the vote and that's why people are forced to come to the uh, ballots to take part in the elections. Those are people who are dependent for example, in their place of work, their management will coerce them into uh, casting the ballots. Uh, we're talking about teachers, doctors, uh, local government officials. Uh, all of these people are coerced into taking part in the elections for the president of the Russian Federation on the 18th of March uh, 2018. And I need to tell you that be despite the fact that people are afraid to talk about what's happening in Crimea, um, still the sentiments, the negative sentiments are growing. And uh, people are ready to protest. Uh, I've seen entries in social media to that end. And uh, how are Russian officials reacting to those um, and to, to those... Uh, mentions. Uh, earlier, they only uh, paid attention to the activists of the National Tatar Movement. Currently, they are also paying attention to all of those who disagree with the regime, 
who speak against it. And uh, right now, every person that disagrees with something uh, is immediately uh, subject to reprisals and through the machinery of the Russian Federation. Last week, a person who was neither Ukrainian nor an activist was uh, uh, detained for 10 days uh, just for the fact that uh, he wrote something on social media. He was uh, tortured and uh, after being released, he left f uh, to the Ukraine. I think that these are conclusions not just for Ukrainians and for Ukrainian Tatars. I very much expect that everything that's happened here in the Crimean Peninsula will be described by us journalists. But this is a threat for the entire world, not just for Ukraine, not just for the people who are currently inhabiting, inhabit uh, the annexed, annexed Crimea Peninsula. There was a survey recently of the top six um, Ukrainian TV channels uh, where they looked at how much airtime was dedicated to the occupied territories of Donetsk and Lugansk and how much was dedicated to Crimea. Crimea got less than 1%. So when you ask about world attention to Crimea, not even Ukraine is interested in Crimea anymore. Um, also talked about time, about patients looking long-term, non-recognition. But while the international community certainly appears to be not doing very much Ukraine, not doing very much, Russia is not standing still. It's building military bases in Crimea, but it's also building roads, it's building schools, it's building hospitals, it's building power stations. Sorry. Um, Um, Russia is building infrastructure which, um, which the people in Crimea see. Uh, and the integration of Crimea into Russia is, is happening very, very quickly. Um, so if the rest of the world waits, um, I'm afraid that by the time something changes, there will be nobody left in Crimea who wants to become part of Ukraine again or of somewhere else. Um, there's a sanctions regime, but international companies are participating in this um, integration into Russia. The most obvious example is the Siemens uh, turbines for power stations. Um, but there are other examples. There are um, French supermarkets, German supermarkets, which are operating in Crimea. Um, somebody mentioned the... Uh, Ukrainian language laws this morning. Um, uh, there's a whole generation of children in Crimea now who are being taught in Russian, who are going to be looking towards further education in Russia. Um, what will be their place in Crimea if in, uh, in Ukraine if Russia is no longer an official language in Ukraine? Um, the current statistics, Russian statistics for Crimea is that the number of children receiving education in Ukrainian is 0.02%. It's less than 100 children. Um, so I th this waiting is, is not what Russia <coughs> is doing. There's, a, um, there's such a movement to integrate Crimea into Russia, and it's not something that the rest of the world can wait on because Russia is not waiting. Analyzing the topic of our panel and the consequences of uh, the annexation of the Crimea, tomorrow we will be talking about consequences, uh, political, economic, uh, military and security. They are all intertwined interlinked and mutually conditioning and as a result we get a picture of annexation of the Crimea as an important event in international affairs. 
I believe that the annexation of the Crimea is the opening of a new stage in contemporary international relations and the turning point in the international systems. Uh, why? L well, there are a number of, a number of issues uh, which uh, can show this. International law, the annexation of the Crimea is a violation of uh, basic rules of international law and uh, the international order uh, established after the Second World War, uh, which the Soviet Union and its uh, legal successor, Russia, formed. I don't need to quote the documents uh, which set it up, that, but that's the first um, important consequence. The second one, initiated by the annexation of uh, the Crimea and the war in the east of the Ukraine. It's the change, radical change of the geopolitical situation and threat uh, to international security. I mean uh, all the consequences of uh, the annexation of the Crimea, <coughs> which uh, triggered uh, these processes, including also war in eastern Ukraine, the changes of uh, the security policy of that state, the change of security policies of different countries and NATO with uh, str uh, strengthening, fortifying its eastern flank. So we have a geopolitical change not only regionally in Central and Eastern Europe, but also more broadly internationally. And the third issue is a precedent. Uh, the case of uh, annexation of the Crimea may be used as a precedent uh, in the future. Uh, uh, we had the voting uh, of resolutions in the United Nations, and we can just look at China uh, and how it, uh, what position it took uh, uh, on the Crimea. Uh, so uh, the key principle is uh, the uh, non-violation of borders and uh, no intervention uh, in internal affairs. And uh, China is very uh, se uh, sensitive about Tibet in this context. So it uh, abstains from voting on the Crimea. Or uh, actions on the China Sea by uh, China uh, on issues which might be uh, resolved uh, in its favor based on principles um, um, violated by Russia in the Crimea. Uh, so by specific uh, actions uh, during the annexation of the Crimea have provided a framework for uh, China to uh, try to follow its example and the behavior of the international community. We have talked about sanctions, that they have uh, played a certain role in uh, stopping or mitigating uh, the um, actions by uh, Russia. But sanctions were adopted only after the shooting down of the Malaysia flight. Uh, before that, there were no clear sanctions, really. With, uh, versus uh, the Russian Federation. So the annexation of Crimea uh, demonstrated the weakness of international uh, communities uh, framework uh, in reacting uh, to uh, threats, especially in situations where uh, the Security Council was supposed uh, to resolve situation uh, where mm, uh, the main source uh, of the threat was actually a member and a permanent one of the Security Cons Council. So the annexation of the Crimea is a turning point for me 
in international relations, both in relation to its global consequences and also in relation to more uh, local or geostrategic aspects about which we will probably have a further opportunity to discuss. Saying about the rapid uh, in integration of Crimea into incorporation, I would say, into Russia. Uh, first, I w want to add some uh, comments uh, briefly about the number of children who are taking their education in Ukraine and so on. Uh, one of the first decisions, as you obviously know, was the, close the closure of Ukrainian uh, gymnasium in Crimea, and now later on there was a Turkish uh, Lyceum closed. So basically, one of the first actions on integration and incorporation of Crimea into Russia was closing and banning the uh, possibilities of taking education in any other language than Russia in Crimea, which is a, was a very swift and brutal in effects movement. And speaking on, on that, I would like to ask uh, the other p panelists, uh, Dr. Bikirova and Mr. Umerov, and maybe uh, Mr. Chubarov could add something. Given all of that, what could Ukrainian authorities do to support the rights of people in Crimea who still want to be integrated into Ukrainian society to support them, and what could international organization, international community do for in this situation? What are the means and what should be done which haven't been done so yet? In a month or so, we will be commemorating uh, uh, the 100th uh, anniversary of the first annexation. Uh, and uh, these were important uh, events uh, for the uh, Crimean Tatars nation. So the Tatars over 150 years from a nation which had its own state were eliminated to, uh, or, or reduced to the role of a national na minority. Uh, so in the 20th century, Crimean Tatars were about a quarter of the population of the Crimea. Uh, the problem was that people, just as today, were forced, uh, were evicted from their land and uh, removed uh, from the peninsula. So this um, policy of uh, russifying the area uh, was conducted uh, already back then and uh, we see it uh, re-emerging today. But at the time, the Crimea, in the past, the Crimean Tatars didn't even speak Russian. Now, um, uh, they all speak both uh, Crimean Tatar and Russian. They are bilingual. But this was a kind of cultural, um, uh, cultural and national uh, suppression. What is happening now? Uh, is a repetition of what was uh, inflicted upon the, the Crimean Tatars nation uh, starting 235 years ago when uh, Crimea was uh, occupied and annexed by Russia. Uh, but nowadays historical processes are much faster than in the past. Over four years, uh, the Crimean Tatars uh, have uh, been uh, destroyed as a nation. Uh, their best people, uh, and uh, the elite like Mr. Chubarov, Mr. Umerov, and others, who were respected uh, citizens. So uh, we are talking about linguistic discrimination. There is uh, no Ukra mention of any Ukrainian uh, education on the Crimea. The Tatar language uh, is also eliminated. And it's clear that uh, Crimea Tatars, under such conditions, uh, will simply 
be uh, losing their identity there and we will have a repetition uh, in a different form of the process of 200, 200 years ago. Uh, but our nation is now better education, uh, educated, but the effects uh, of uh, the deportation and discrimination from uh, 1944, which this, to which uh, Tatars were subjected when they lost uh, over 40% of the population. Some claim that it was 25%, but anyway, it was a huge loss for the nation. And our language was also uh, not being taught after um, the deportation within the Soviet Union, because uh, at the time they were removed uh, to special zones and they were turned really as a whole nation. The whole nation was uh, sort of imprisoned, was treated like political prisoners. And uh, uh, Tatars were uh, prevented from uh, leaving um, uh, their forced residence. So they lived like in ghettos or like on reservations. And after 1956, again, they were not allowed to return uh, to their land. Uh, everything linked uh, to their culture was pr uh, persecuted. So uh, there was only one uh, Heturma song and dance uh, uh, group and one uh, newspaper. And uh, then there was a decision on a rehabilitation of the uh, Crimean Tatar nation granting us the same status as other people but uh, even after 57 we still couldn't return to Crimea. In uh, Tashkent there was a faculty of Crimean Tatar but simply a Tatar uh, faculty because it was forbidden even to mention uh, the Crimea. Under uh, conditions of su such repression the Crimean Tatars worked uh, to revive their culture and uh, I apologize for uh, speaking too long uh, about our history but after the mass uh, spontaneous repatriation uh, in the 80s uh, the, uh, or 90s the Tatars uh, all, almost man uh, managed to regain uh, their uh, uh, identity and their presence in the Crimea and now we have yet another tra tragedy and Europe and the world s should somehow uh, at least mitigate uh, the consequences uh, of uh, this disaster for us. Uh, my name is Umerov. You have said that uh, I live in Ankara. But uh, we were uh, we went to Ankara only briefly. And now we live in uh, Kiev, in our country to which uh, the Crimea belongs. Thank you very much. Uh, should I, if I should tell you a, a little bit about uh, our history? Mm, I will tell you that 1944 was the time when we were deported from the Crimea. Almost half of the nation uh, uh, perished um, over the two years after uh, expulsion uh, due to hunger. And uh, then uh, when uh, the Soviet Union began to collapse, uh, we managed uh, to return 
in the number of about 300,000, which was about 13 percent of inhabitants of the Crimea. And 2014, we have another disaster in the form of occupation of the Crimea by Russia. This was uh, outright aggression in a situation when Ukraine was very weak. We remember uh, the uh, events in Maidan, uh, the escape of Yanukovych from Ukraine, and uh, this uh, moment was taken advantage of by Russians uh, to aggress and annex uh, the Crimea with a um, referendum under uh, uh, military occupation and uh, at the point of the gun uh, the referendum uh, results are not worthy of mention and of quoting and two days later there was the so-called uh, incorporation uh, of two entities uh, to Russia, that was uh, Crimea and Sevastopol. And uh, the Russians immediately began uh, wide-ranging repressions. Loyalty of the population is uh, obligatory. Everyone who is disloyal is subject to repression. There are hundreds of uh, searches arrests, uh, uh, criminal procedures are waged against people, there are murders, there is pressure on lawyers, and uh, there is censorship and the limitation of activity of the media. Not a single uh, newspaper or mass media uh, broadcast uh, remains uh, independent uh, of uh, the government uh, and culture. The only palace of the uh, Crimea Khans of Crimean uh, Tatars in Bakhchisarai is being destroyed by the new government uh, under the guise of renovation. They are destroying our cultural heritage. I'm talking about dozens of searches of uh, penal procedures. Over 60 people are currently arrested and detained uh, in the Crimea. Some of them have been convicted and uh, taken away uh, to imprisonment in Russia. Uh, whoever doesn't recognize um, uh, Russian authority in the Crimea is subject to government terror. Uh, so, uh, if you openly present your uh, resistance to the regime, uh, you are exposed to uh, repression. And I think nobody today has mentioned uh, what uh, remedy can be taken against this. Ukraine should not forget about the issue of the annexed uh, Crimean uh, territory. It should uh, raise this issue uh, in uh, every available uh, international context, in international relations, and uh, and from territorial autonomy, because in the current constitution of Ukraine, the Crimea is uh, branded as an autonomous uh, territory. It should be branded as an integral part of uh, Ukraine. Uh, the, Council, the Council of Europe and uh, major uh, countries 
should continue exerting pressure on the Russian Federation in resolutions through boycott, uh, through refraining from inviting Russia to events and also by boycotting events in Russia and by not talking uh, or handshaking with Putin. Uh, soon there will be the um, uh, World Cup, the Football World Championship in Russia. This is a major international event. And if some or preferably all the uh, participating countries would uh, boycott um, the World Cup in Russia, this would be a very strong uh, gesture against the image of Russia. Elections will be held in uh, Russia this weekend and uh, predictably Crimea will participate. If the world does not recognize the uh, an Crimea annexation, if the annexation, uh, then there are all the grounds not to recognize the elections uh, of the uh, Russian president throughout the territory because not recognizing the elections in Crimea alone does not make any sense at all. But uh, since the election uh, has been carried out in Crimea and the results thereof uh, will be joined to the results of the overall election, there are grounds not to recognize the results of the presidential elections in Russia. And to conclude, let me say the most important thing, uh, unless we succeed in helping Ukraine now, uh, there will be a precedent that will spread to other countries. Um, another Putin will emerge in the world who will think, well, if he could, why can't I? Uh, so any person that analyzes the issue of Ukraine, uh, Crimea, Donbass, annexation, occupation, should understand that this may affect their own country. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much uh, to all the speakers and thank you very much to you in particular, Mr. Umarov, for this very forceful um, statement. I think this was a very important um, intervention um, on your part and I, I would like to thank you in particular with respect to the reference that you made uh, in what regards the upcoming elections in the Russian Federation. We still have numerous questions in fact but in light of our time constraints we decided to open the floor and bring in the audience as well or at least some of you and collect some questions or comments. So we would like to ask you to be very brief identify yourself and also state very clearly to who your question is addressed. Who wants to be first? There's a gentleman in the back. Uh, I'd like to uh, bring up two possible uh, um, public relations um, issues on the Crimea, which are never usually... Could you please identify yourself? Oh, Taras Kuzio. Um, I'd like to bring up two possible uh, public relations issues on the Crimea, which are never usually raised. Firstly, um, many Western democracy-promoting foundations support the Russian opposition. I think we should... Uh, insist that those democracy-promoting foundations ask members of the Russian opposition if they support or oppose the annexation of the Crimea. Because, because actually, the annexation of the Crimea is supported by many members of the Russian opposition, including Alex Navalny, for example. And they should not be receiving Western money if they support the annexation of the Crimea. I think that should be adamant from, from our point. Firstly, secondly, um, because then they are not Democrats. I mean, they are uh, Democrats at home and imperialists abroad. Secondly, um, and more kind of impert a more pertinent question, in, which is not usually brought up, is that we neglect to, to understand that Western academic academics who write on Russian history always write the Crimea as Russian. If you pick up any Western history of Russia, the Crimea is portrayed as Russian. And, um, and therefore, Western academics should be named and shamed on this question. What do I mean by this? If you, if you look at contemporary views of the, um, uh, the white settler 
invasions of Australia and the Americas, these are depicted as invasions, genocide, and occupation, not as settlement by white settlers. That is the new terminology used vis-a-vis -vis Australia and the Americas. They didn't, if they were settled, if it was settlement, they would be going into empty lands. They were not going into empty lands, they were going into lands which were populated by people. Um, and they committed genocide and these are occupations. There are people who were there, the indigenous people are First Nations, that's how they're depicted. When Western academics write about the Crimea, they ignore this question. They ignore the fact that the Crimean Tatars are the indigenous people. They say the Russians are the indigenous people. This is racism. If, it was apply, if that same approach was used in Australia, Canada, America, or Latin America, those academics would be accused of racism. And therefore, I think we should name and shame Western academics who write in such a way and continue to do so. Thank you. We are ready to collect two more questions if we have them. Let me respond first to the question from Taras. Uh, to uh, address the Russian opposition so that it clearly states whether it uh, supports the annexation of Crimea or not. Certainly, I uh, support this uh, position, but it's a question. There's a question therein. Do you even see the Russian opposition, systemic or non-systemic? Uh, there are particular individuals abroad, there are centers. However, uh, one needs to uh, reject the thoughts that there are many people who consider themselves the Russian opposition, but they should be, what they should be saying is not what they're saying. They're saying that the Crimea was illegally uh, annexed. Uh, but what do we do? There are people there who want to be Russian. So let's conduct another referendum. Uh, for me, the most terrible is this attitude because uh, it's devastating. Anybody can uh, say, as Ilmi has said, uh, that they're using force now and then they will be fine-tuning the situation. I think that we should make a clear distinction between them, between that. Um, Crimea regains independence, and then we can talk about any proposals uh, that we could uh, consider. Regarding uh, the um, economics, uh, that is true. The West has a very much distorted view of the Crimea and the Crimean Tatars, because for centuries, the Crimean history was written by Russian historians and it was it's Russian historiography and so now the Ukrainian um, historians should also pay attention to that and what is in fact the Ukrainian state doing about this we need to be honest here uh, neither the Ukrainian state nor the international uh, organizations including the UN have uh, uh, achieved anything effective uh, on the Russian occupied territory and they cannot achieve anything because Russia has enough force to ignore their actions uh, of the UN and the Ukraine and Ukraine so the Ukrainian state should um, perfect its law right now which should un uh, unequivocally demonstrate to the world how Crimea is going to develop once it regains its sovereignty. Um, Ilmi Ulmerov uh, spoke about um, also improving the Crimean autonomy uh, based on the rights of the indigenous nation. And the last uh, thing, this uh, concerns our first panel discussion, the Minsk agreement, the Normandy meetings, that is all a big mistake. For me, as a Ukrainian citizen, it's almost a disaster. This is an attempt 
at uh, introducing a hierarchy of between the, the issues uh, related to the Russian aggression to Ukraine. So they say, first, let's deal with uh, Ukraine's control over certain regions of Donbass, and later on we'll deal with Crimea. That was what Gabriel, the former um, German foreign minister, said. That is a total disaster for Ukraine, because uh, we know that for sure this gives a realistic hope to Putin. Uh, so Ukraine at this stage should clearly and uh, honestly reformat the tasks that it should implement on its own and with the use of its partner. The task uh, should be the following for Ukraine and its partners, the, to regain uh, territorial integrity of Ukraine with the borders that are acknowledged by the international community, together with the autonomous Republic of Crimea and Sevastopol. And if that formula is uh, honestly adopted by everyone, then later on, inside that, uh, within that uh, formula, uh, several stages can be achieved. Uh, any other attempts at helping Ukraine uh, are conducted on the Ukrainian controlled territory. Uh, Ukraine um, only supports. The, the Ukrainians uh, uh, that inhabit Crimea who leave for the unoccupied territory because they cannot do it in Crimea. Okay, we do have one right there. Здравствуйте, меня зовут Артём Линика. Я в первую очередь хотел бы задать такой маленький вопрос Ильма Умеров, если делаю. First of all, let me ask a question. Please forgive me. Don't you think that uh, when we talk about not recognizing uh, presidential elections throughout the territory of uh, Russia, if they are conducted in Crimea, aren't we considering Crimea as part of Russia? Uh, that's the first question. And the second question, Mr. Kuzio, I would like to uh, uh, support his view uh, that uh, currently we need to correctly phrase who says what and how third countries need to be described so that the West knows uh, how to correctly define certain processes and events. It is our job to correctly define what is happening um, in our courtyard because some people in the West are not aware of what's happening and they that's why they say that Crimea is uh, part of Russia, even Ukraine is uh, considered to be part of Russia. Some polls even say that. Uh, but uh, that annoys us very much. This question was addressed to me, so let me respond. Um, not recognizing the results of the elections in Russia because they were held also in Crimea does not mean that we are recognizing the annexation. That is, It is in fact quite the opposite that is the case. Responding to that question. Okay, so unfortunately for the sake of time we're going to have to wrap up the discussion but I want to thank all of our panelists uh, for the lively discussion. Obviously, it's a topic that we could dedicate an entire conference to, uh, and one that we will continue to discuss um, in the near future, for sure. Uh, the fact that Vladimir Putin is going to undoubtedly be reelected as the president of uh, Russia, as we had talked about here, is a clear sign and stark reminder that Russian policy towards Ukraine and towards Crimea will probably not change anytime soon. Um, but that also does not mean that we cannot stop paying attention to the situation in uh, Crimea, especially when it comes to the plight of the Crimean Tatars. So uh, just some key points that I think uh, I would like to just highlight from our discussion in summary um, that uh, came out from the different uh, speakers. Um, clearly, the annexation, uh, illegal annexation, was a turning point in EU-Russia relations, as both um, Svobodemsky and Piotr Bayot had mentioned. 
Um, but at the same time, there's no clear vision on how to get Crimea back to Ukraine. This is one of the biggest questions that uh, remains open in terms of the policy towards uh, Crimea. And whether Crimea can leave Russia or will Russia abandon its occupation of the peninsula, this is, whether or not this is a realistic scenario is another uh, pr major open question. Um, there was a broad, they briefly brought up the idea of international trusteeship to manage the legal status of uh, the peninsula. It's a very interesting point. I wish we had more time to draw this out and discuss, but I think maybe it is something that may be looked at uh, more in the future. But uh, other issues we need to look at is the quick integration, as was discussed, of uh, Crimea into Russia is, is, is dangerous. The militarization of the peninsula, especially for the West, is extremely dangerous. And uh, lastly, the attention um, to the issue of Crimea, not only by the international community, but by Ukraine itself, appears to be something that needs, uh, that needs to be much more elevated. So thank you all. Uh, do we have one last, do we have a, a minute for one last closing remark? Okay, last closing remark, Mr. Chubarov. Announcements. Teraz jest sesja posterowa. We have a poster session going on. After this session, there will be a poster session. So um, I'd like to invite professors and tutors that we invited to take a look at the draft work. I can see another request for the floor, by the way. Um, f f so we have uh, asked tutors to take a look at the projects. We will have just less than an hour coffee and a discussion about the various uh, research product projects that focus around the subject matter that we're discussing today. Scholars, younger and more experienced, would like to discuss that. And, and now is the time in the hall. If we uh, start uh, on time, then we can make up for the lost time and finish in a timely manner. I uh, apologize for asking for the floor again, but uh, I don't want to end on a pessimistic note. For 45 years we were in exile and many people said that we would never return to Crimea. Uh, so it is for the first time that we, were able, that we dealt with KGB when I was in secondary school in 10th grade. We fought for our return to Crimea and we have succeeded. Politically, Russia will not change in the foreseeable future. If politicians uh, do not abide by the principle of uh, justice and international law, uh, so it is our job uh, to do the following. We should do everything possible to demonstrate uh, the power of law and Putin in the nearest future uh, should uh, return Russia towards the norms of international law. Okay, so once more we have a poster session now which is combined with a coffee break and we cordially invite everyone to get familiar with the posters uh, and the authors uh, of the projects will be there to discuss more if you are interested in them. Thank you.